Welcome back to Open Line, talking about the mayor's race, the recent mayoral debate, and an upcoming poll from News Channel 5. Bears Jacobian is here with Jacobian Research. Pat Nolan, our analyst. Early numbers, again, is being weighted. We'll have final results later on Monday. But is there a gender gap you're seeing in the early numbers that, that you're looking at right now? There is. It's not greater than expected, but uh, female candidates tend to draw a little bit more among female voters, especially younger female voters, and that seems to be the case. So uh, females are slightly more likely to support the Barry campaign and males are slightly more likely to support the Fox campaign. The, the difference is not large enough to throw, to call it a gender gap as such. It's kind of within the margin of error, but there is a, there is a difference. And you can see on the screen the difference in, in how many registered voters we have that are female and how many are male, and then the turnout in the August vote on that. So we do have, and you see this across the country, more registered females, than we, and we had more in this case by 14%. Right. We had 14% more females show up and vote in the right. August election than we did males. Actually, what this chart means, just to clarify to the viewers, is that of all registered voters, of the 295,000 registered voters, 42% are male, 58% are female. Of those who voted in August 6th, the 104,000 plus voters, 43% were male, 57% female. So the, re the, re uh, the turnout by gender was basically insignificant. It was proportional to their ratio in the, popula in the voting age population. But no doubt that women vote more than men. Women tend, older women tend at a higher proportion than any other subgroup in the population. So if I were the Barry campaign, I would try to get more women to the poll. If I were the Fox campaign, I'll try to get more males to the poll. Whichever one succeeds on election day is likely to be favorable. Favorite. When you talked about earlier not seeing as much young people voting, do you see any gender difference there? Are you, uh, among the younger people that are voting, are they more likely to be female or more likely to be male? They're more likely to be male. And the problem is, because both candidates are roughly the same age, Pat, there's not as large a difference in younger male, younger female, and so on. Mm -hmm. it, meaning that if, let's say, Megan Barry was 45 years old and Fox was 65, or vice versa, you would tend to see more gender age-based voting patterns than you do now. But both candidates are roughly the same age and they're perceived to be the same age, so age has not really played as much of a factor by itself. But when you combine it with uh, gender and when you combine it with geographic region, ideology and political party, you begin to see a pattern emerging which resembles more of a political partisan election than a uh, local municipal nonpartisan election. Interesting. Okay, let's let's get a, several calls in here. Let's go to Mel. Hello, Mel. Yes, uh, I have two very quick questions. Uh, I'm wondering if anyone on the panel is aware if Ms. Berry voted for the uh, taxpayer-funded lifetime health care benefits for Metro Council members. And then secondly, will there be another mayoral TV debate for the election? There is another mayoral TV. Yes, debate. I believe the Fox Channel is having. I don't know the date, but it'll be held. Probably, well, obviously, to be held in the next week to ten days. It's Channel 17. It's next week. Yeah. So Fox 17 is having it. And that's and the next I, one. I, I know the actual creation of that health care benefit the caller is talking about probably predates when Megan Berry was there, but there have been several efforts to repeal that that have gone into the council. I do not remember the legislative history of those efforts, whether they actually came to a vote on the floor or whether they were tabled or what happened to them. But there have been several efforts to do that, and a couple in, in this current council that did not pass. But you'd have to you'd have to talk to the council staff office and the clerk's office, Metro Clerk's office. I'm sure they could provide that legislation to you and what the roll call votes were taken on that, and you can see what she voted. Let's keep going with calls here. Tony, hello, Tony. Yeah, thank you for taking the call, but I've been waiting uh, urgently. Now, uh, my main two concerns is uh, people are just passing off the black vote, and I'm black, I remember me mid it's 50, they're just passing it off like it's, uh, it's not counting for anything. And I don't see a lot of blacks coming out for this election. And I've told Ms. Barry's campaign, uh, who calls every day, three or four times, uh, get confirmation. Uh, I don't see a lot of blacks coming out. What have they got to look forward to? There has nothing been done in the black neighborhood. And nothing been done in the housing area. So I don't see that coming. And 
it's, it's just not a lot of people I've talked to are not interested in it because they said they damn sure do, damn sure don't. Uh, the second thing is, I think the mayor should have been involved in the school board uh, superintendent's race, uh, whether the school board likes it or not, because he's going to deal with them and uh, he's going to pass the money over to them, and it should have been, they should have waited until the mayor got an office for him to try to do something. Okay, now that will happen. Uh, yeah. Your first point, very interesting. What What do you What do you think about that? I, I I don't have any particular reason to believe that there's going to be an extraordinarily high African-American turnout, certainly nothing in the areas that we have seen in Nashville and other communities when Barack Obama, say, was on the ballot, or as we saw eight years ago for Howard Gentry. Uh, it appears that what black vote that did turn out in August, in the, looking again at the precincts that are historically African-American, they split that vote primarily among Gentry and Bill Freeman which left very little vote for any of the other five candidates that were in the race. I think particularly the challenge for Megan Berry, and you heard that the Berry campaign was working on this particular caller to get him to vote, is to try to do, get what vote they can in the African community to be as large as they can. Chances are whatever African American vote shows out in votes will tend to favor Berry. Now, by what margin? That's a good question. But the other more important mar question is by what size is that vote. If that vote is, the bigger that vote is, then not only given the percentages she's going to get, that will add more to her. And when you look at how the vote may be split in other parts of town, the African-American vote could make a difference between making a race very close and maybe having a little bigger margin one way or the other. And I know the data that you're getting from uh, the Election Commission doesn't give you good information when it comes to that. In, in 30 seconds or so, what, what do you think about what he said and, and the impact of the black vote? I think the caller is right. There's not a great deal of excitement about either candidate in the campaigns, partly because Howard Gentry is out of the race. And as Pat mentioned, Bill Freeman was working very hard in the African-American community to turn that vote out. Rightly so, because he got a large percentage of that vote. The problem here is that 40% of all registered voters in Davidson County do not have an indication of whether they're African American or white or other races. So it, uh, it's a painstaking process to go precinct by precinct to, to divine essentially whether someone's race is white, African American, something else. But there's a clear signal as to which way they're likely to vote, and they're likely to vote for a, someone perceived as a Democratic candidate. All right, let's get one more call in. Greg, you have about 30 seconds. Okay, thanks. You said 30 seconds? Yes, sir. Uh, you, know, you know, we're talking about patterns, and these, these races all have a kind of the same pattern. Um, you know, um, Ms. Berry, is, when she was talking about in one of the debates a while back, she's talking about how much money they spent here and there and everywhere else, and just typical spending, spending, spending. Mr. Fox was talking about how, how he's going to cut the spending. So to me, it's a no-brainer. Mr. Fox should will win overwhelmingly. But since we have a system that's not a legitimate voting system because we vote on computers, I can guarantee you that she is probably going to win since Bredesen uh, backed her up and endorsed her. And the polls and all this polling stuff about showing how women are going to vote overwhelmingly for her is just putting more icing on the cake to justify her winning when she's not really legitimately going to win because I feel these elections are all fixed. Okay, we have to take a break. Um, skepticism about the voting process. Thank you for the call. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.